Okay, great. I'm glad you guys were able to come today. This is this is wonderful. Another uh, wintry day where we can be inside doing something fun. <laughs> I know, really. <laughs> That's and, the good thing about Zoom. Can you imagine me driving all the way to the Cape? Or like, you too, I know, Lori? I know. Yeah. And, it's, and you know, it's no funny because somebody said, oh, what are you going to do if there's a, a snow day? I said, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> We're Zoom. Really the only problem great. I have is if we wind up with a power outage. I was doing yeah. a <laughs> demo yesterday for an art group uh, in the morning, and we had short power outage, uh, knocked out the internet, and I mean, uh, I was able to hook up again. I had to, rever you know, switch everything to my phone yeah. and do the demo, finish the last, you know, half hour on the phone, but it was like, oh, geez, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, some power outages, that's the problem. <laughs> but anyway, I've been working on this one, um, today and some of you uh, will have recognized it and certainly you know feel free ask questions but I did leave up some of the preliminary stuff so that you could see it. What you don't see here is I did do um, a variety of different sketches with the China wax markers on the gray tone paper. Uh, one that I specifically like I worked on rearranging the boats because the, the, the photo the boats are really neat kind of laid out neat and tidy you know they're it's just way too um parallel to one another so i was able to like do a little slight shifting to give them a little bit of skew um and then i worked on a little quick uh color study just planning out colors because in my mind's eye what i was picturing was a painting where the, the part of the story really was well, it's about the boats, the boats are there, but it really was about how the sunlight is coming into this painting and um, trying to bring in color into the shadows or the shaded areas of the grasses. Uh, and that, um, what am I talking about the shaded? Um, the light of the sand, the light of the, um, uh, uh, the pathway, and then for the shadows, it was bringing the, you know, color into the shadows, kind of got off uh, track there for a minute. Um, so that was, that was my, my main thought with this, which is why I did a little bit of rearranging, because what I really wanted to do was to show this almost like circular path, you know, it's coming down and around the boats, and it's moving, we've got the light that's falling over here, and even the path has made this part of a a crescent that's happening on this side, which is not necessarily uh, something that I would um, plan to do. But when I, this is the beauty of doing little sketches. When I started sketching the thing out, it's like, oh, wow, I really like this wedge on the side. The, um, the, little, the little sketch you can see, it's just, oh, you know, it just kind of gave a really nice little entryway here. But then you don't stay on this wedge because it's really just about color and light and shadow. It's got nothing else in it. So I kind of went along with that idea of uh, the flow of something that is uh, curving around on itself. And, you know, then we're moving up through the center. So if this was really a play, it's a, it's a play on, uh, you know, values, values are in everything that I do, but it's really uh, working on bringing in that uh, uh, interaction of the warm and the cool colors, colors that are muted, colors that have more vibrancy to them, which is why with the shadows, I, I really wanted to start off with something pretty strong. And there was a, a fairly dark um, violet a uh, reddish violet underneath here. Then I added a little bit of a bluish violet and playing around, I've got this blue that I, you know, I've tried it over here, which is slightly different because this one, since it's my test one, I put colors on and take it off. So <laughs> sometimes it winds up getting a little, um, uh, a little bit muddy, but truthfully, I like, <laughs> I really like these little ones. They're fun. Change the format slightly. Um, this one's a little bit more rectangular. And 
you know, the sketching I was doing really had stretch, had more of a stretched out rectangle. So instead of a 12 by 16, I did a 12 by 18. And, you know, that way, again, it's going to accentuate this curve that I have here. And the idea is that, you know, when you're standing there on the beach and you're looking and you're kind of scanning back and forth. So that's what I really wanted to do. Uh, so I thought what I would show you today is um, how I'm uh, resolving some of the uh, shaded areas along with the uh, sunlit areas. Uh, the boats, I may have to go in and do a little bit more finessing of the, the lines and the angles of the boats, but generally the, the shape is down all right. This one's, this one's driving me a little bit crazy because He's wound up a little smaller than I had uh, originally planned. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, but we can, pastels, we can always fix our problems, <laughs> you know, or our mistakes. <laughs> so anyone have any questions before I get started? Okay. So I'm working on, um, <laughs> sorry, a piece of uh, Wallace paper that I found. and. You know, I, I haven't worked on Wallace paper in a very long time. And I, I, I do like it, but I, I guess I forgot how textural it was. Uh, I've been working on a couple other paintings on that new Lux paper. And when I've been describing it to people, I'd say, oh, yeah, I think they're, they're similar from my memory of Wallace. And um, this, this has got a different sort of texture. Uh, but what I'm liking is, is um, you know how I do love seeing the layers, which is why I like a lot of those textural uh, paintings, and this is giving me that, so I'm quite pleased with that. Okay, so anyway, I've been working dark to light, but then I'm sneaking in every once in a while the lights just because it's helping me to see how everything is going. What I do need is if anyone, I'm gonna move in a little bit actually, so you guys can see it a little closer. If um, if I wind up standing in front of the camera, just uh, say something, because I don't necessarily always notice that myself. And let me just adjust this slightly so we can get that a little straight. Perfect. Not really perfect. It's still a little cockeyed, but you can see my test swatch a little bit there. Okay, slight angle. All righty. So I'd left off with my um, shadows, and I've got these shadows where the ground is uneven. So I'm I was coming in with the orange that I had, so it didn't look like the shadows were actually lying on something that is flat like tarmac. I mean, you, you know what the beach is like, the, the sand is moving up and down and you know, there's divots and holes and rises. So I'm just kind of coming in and just doing a little check to make sure that nothing looks too incredibly straight. And I kind of, I think I'm gonna bring this in just a little bit more. I can always bring it back out if I want. But I do like the way that that feels like it's going over a little rise there. Kind of reorganized this guy and brought him in. And I love the way that some of the light was going behind the steps here. The steps are going to come out a little bit. So I think I just put a little bit of marker in there. You know, that's what I just call markers is when I just put in a little bit of color someplace to remind me what it was I was thinking. Now, as this orange goes back, I wanted to mute it down a little bit, but I'd like it to come around the edge of this boat. So I'm gonna put a little bit there. I've got little shadows that are falling in there. Let's just come through and break up a little bit of this mass down here too. That's gonna be a little bit more of an angle coming in because all the, the colors that are going on top of this orange are all going to wind up being a little bit lighter. I don't want the same orange there, but I think what I'm going to do is just, just put a couple little flecks of orange right on this wall. 
just to bring a little bit of that up. Okay. Okay, dark. I wanted to get those light shapes taken to the dark. This one I've made a little bit too light. And what I thought I'd do is just come back in. Let me test the colors. Okay, this is my, my muted blue that I've got in a variety of places. So this paper is lending itself to putting dark over light, provided you're not doing a lot of uh, pulling, uh, scumbling, glazing. So I'm going to just, so I'd like to have a little bit more of a contrast here to get a, that, a little sharper edge. And this is coming in. I'm just bringing that out, some of those dark pieces. And if it winds up being a little bit too blue, I can uh, knock that down with something that's a little bit more uh, dull. Let's get just a little bit here, not much. And I also have like a violet, a red violet that's happening in here, a muted red violet. Put it in a couple other places. Just stretch a little bit of these shadows out a little bit. You know, because the sun is really, this is a long sun and this is a little lighter. So it's like diffusing those edges. Now let's just bring a little bit, little soft glaze around here. Overzealous added something where it doesn't belong. I've got three boxes behind me with um, my the colors that I'm using in light, medium, and dark. Okay, so let's see how this blue is going to work out. I tested it over here. I did a little test here. I like it right now. The orange is still strong, but I'm going to resolve this. I really want that the violets that are underneath the blue and the red to still show through. So I'm doing really far more of a scumbly stroke. If I go too close up to the boat, I'm gonna have to come back out and go, because the, the way the light hits with the shadow, there is a, a dark edge there. And of course that blue with the orange, boy, that's a really nice little electric feeling. I just really want it to be, um, a little bit more, I don't know if joyful is the right word, but playful, playful. I want the shadows and the light to be a little bit more playful. Getting a little bit of a tangent happening here, but I think these um, steps are gonna have to go a little bit longer anyway, so I can sort that out when I do the lights. Not gonna go back too far because that area there is really in the, I think that little bit works. Oh, I think I'm gonna leave it just a little bit on top, you can see that. I'm just gonna check just in case somebody's having trouble getting, getting in, nope. Okay, since I have this in the shadow there, I'm gonna put a little bit in there. I don't wanna to go to, I want the back to be a little bit more muted. So I'm not gonna use a lot of these brighter colors in the back, but if I do use them, it's going to be kind of judicious, you know, just little, little marks. Not a lot. I don't think I want any back here. Let's see. Just put a little, oh, oh yeah, okay, just a little. That's what you do, not sure, just drag a little. Again, it's going over the same violets that were here, but because a real soft drag there, so it's not, it's not heavy here, a little, it's still a light stroke, a little heavier there. Okay, let's just put a few in here. I like sprinkling the same color in a couple of different places without going crazy. So I don't wanna to do too much here. And just a couple in here. Okay, so colors are in, so no color is in isolation. Okay, this is what this is what caused me uh, issues when I was first doing this. Now my assumption is going to be that, well, it's like I said over here, I can't really go by. I have different set of colors underneath here. This is sand that has a shadow. This is concrete that has a shadow. 
So um, I have darker colors, more bluey, bluey greens in here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that blue on here. And I'm going to put it a little bit more towards the top. I still might, although, you know, don't really, really want to put dark on after I've put light. Just a little bit, just for that. <coughs> oh, excuse me for coughing here. Oh, look what, look at, this is a shadow on the sand. And I have not used that violet. Let me get in here. This is what that violet looked like. Isn't that a gorgeous color? So I'm just gonna get in there. Let me just take a sip. Oh, let's try. There we have. Okay. I just come in a little bit. So no, I'm not really trying to make really precise lines here, but I yeah, oh, let's get a little of that blue right, right in here. Oh, a little bit of it over here too. Don't want to go too crazy. Okay, yeah, because what I have to keep saying to myself is this is not going to stay this orange. So this is like this, although I'm painting from dark to light, I'm also conscious of the fact that these darks are going to look very different as I start to play around with the color on here. Okay, now I've got, this is, this I want to feel warmer than it is right now. I'm gonna move a little bit to some of these. I'm gonna leave the boats alone for the minute. I've done some darks. So I'm gonna get in here and um, get some warms. And I had used uh, a variety of colors and I had this pink that I had used and I really did like it, but I don't want everything to wind up looking really pink. So I'm just gonna just do a little search over here. See if I've got a muted orange. Let's just test it. Oh, oh. Okay, he may work. Okay, I just, he's gonna be pretty bright right here because this is where we have the edge of the step. But this is doing too with the hard pass gel. Okay, see, now this doesn't feel as much in isolation. See that warmth I brought in? Okay, that's making a little bit more sense because it is in sun. It's not like it has to be the same as the concrete. I don't really want to be the same as the sand, but I want there to be a little bit of a connection. So I'm going to go right along that edge there. So it's catching in. Yes, I like, I like this. These will be nice in here. I put the, uh, these guys in way too light to start with. So I just really did get in and kind of, I'm gonna go in a little bit heavier with this right here. I'm gonna really wanna make sure that there's light there. Okay. Now, this is a hard pastel. Fine for down here because I had a, a lot of really loose layers. Right up in here, I'm going to need one that's a little bit softer. Um, let's see. That feels like a Rembrandt. Rembrandts aren't really terribly soft. This guy might be too orange. Let's try him. I was just doing it with these muted guys. Mm, he's really yellow. Let's see what happens if I put it on very lightly. A light, yeah, see, this is the difference with this soft pastel. This is a Geralt. I can put that on pretty light and I don't have to worry about um, dragging the color that's underneath. Not as soft as I would like though. So I'm gonna put that guy back. It's not actually working the way I want. Jeez, you know, I love it when you have like a whole lot. Oh, here's one. Oh, this is a schminky. Schminkies are really, really super soft. And some of these schminkies I keep in their wrapper. So I'm just gonna unwrap that. 
Has anyone tried schminkies? They're gorgeous. They really are. Look at look look at how all I have to do is hold. I'm not it, look at it. All I have to do is just <laughs> it just comes off. It's like so super super soft. So this is what I want. Get a little bit of light here. Look at that. Hardly any stroke at all. I get a little bit of light in here. I'll let this because this is all that same. There we go. And just drag, drag it right there. So it feels like it's more light infused. This is going to look different over here, but let's have a check and see. The look definitely changes the color of this. Kind of knocks that down just a little. Don't want to go back too far. And I want to leave these uh, rugged, rough kind of marks that I have underneath because that is the way the sand would be. Just let that orange show through. I go a little. Go a little bit right there. Look at that. And I'm not really putting a lot of pressure down. I mean, I'm putting a you know a little more pressure. Look at that. How it comes out so. Well, that's really pretty. Okay. So now that I've used this schminky, see values are so close. We're losing the top of this uh, step here. So the uh, in reality, the concrete and the sand aren't far off. But what I have to do is decide which one is going to be lighter. And I, I'm going to want this. I believe I'm going to want the um, sand to be lighter than the concrete. So, OK, so this is a winner. I'm going to leave this guy a little darker over there on that side. I have to make him even darker. This is why you work dark to light. And as I said, that's where I made my mistake. I started off way too light with them. So then I don't wind up making a, and I like the light up here. So see the difference is, is up here, it's surrounded by dark objects. And this, this is here, that's darker, that's lighter, darker, darker. Down here, the step is surrounded by light. So I'm just gonna take a brush and I am going to, this is a soft brush, okay? When you're taking off pastels, if you use, um, now, the same thing happened yesterday. I went to try to find my stiff, um, larger brush. Okay, stiff bristle. Okay, wow, look at all that dust. Soft bristle. Okay, if I'm just trying to lift, I tend to use my um, hard bristle because it'll just lift. If I want to do a little bit blending, I will use the soft. So see what's happened? I'm able to actually push that color right in. It's, I don't think brushes are a good blending tool, but they certainly serve their purpose for, look at that, now I'm able to get right in, just push that. And now I'm gonna use the stiff one and anything that's excess is gonna come off. I know some of these steps are not exactly the right size, but that, whoops, but that is gonna get resolved when I start painting the steps. Okay, so I can see a little bit more of a difference. I'm trying to check you guys if the light, my light's too bright. I don't think it is. There we are. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so let's the sand. Now I'm going to try for something light. I do not want to use white. So I am going to come in. I'm going to do a little test. Over here, I had used this pink. And I did like the pink with the um, orange. The difference is in this one, I had pink first and I added orange on top. Over here, I decided the orange was gonna give me more of a punch underneath. So I put the orange first. So let's see how the pink goes on top. The problem is if I go too light, everything's gonna wind up looking chalky. I'm going to lose that lovely intensity of the color. So I'm gonna be, real careful that I don't cover up all the orange that all I'm doing is kind of like um, diffusing it by having some of the pink. I think that kind of did the trick. I got a little orange in here. I can just put a couple of marks. Oops, the orange is still there. 
Okay. All right, let's see. So value, so let's get the value for this here. Okay, that's darker. This is slightly darker. This is darker. Find it with this, um, this paper here, the Wallace paper, I'm really able to, if there's areas that I'm really trying to blend, it is pretty easy to blend on it too. Okay, as I said, this the back of this boat, we are seeing more of. We will because of the angle that it's at. This boat over here, you're seeing less of, but what's happened is, is I've lost a little bit of it at the bottom because in addition to there being a shadow, there was also some of the, um, oh my gosh, the rack line uh, reeds and dried up vegetation. So let's, let's see, let's get this just a little darker. I'm gonna come in, same color that I have over here. A lot of times I repeat colors in different places. Okay, so you can see, look at that texture showing through. I pushed it. Well, I don't know. Can you can you see the texture showing through or not? Can anyone see the texture? Do you want me to zoom in? Yeah. It's kind of a little bit. See, I can't see it too much, to be honest. Yeah, okay. Let, let me move in. You know, and it's it's too bad. Uh, zoom, zoom does corrupt slightly so you never get as clear of a photo i mean if i do it on my ipad or my phone i get a really nice clear picture so um I I a little just, now. what was that you could see it now yeah i can see it now, it now? okay yeah, so you see that so this this texture this uh, it almost i was trying to think of the word before i'm gonna say modeled but it's just a really really lovely texture i'm gonna go out just a little bit so you can see the whole at least the, the whole thing or most of it. Let me just, because I was goofing around, let me see if I can straighten this guy out just a little bit. So there you go. Okay, that's close enough here. I don't think this tiny little corner where my tack is. Oh, and by the way, these are not actually tacked in. You know, I use tacks to just hold the corners down. I don't actually tack my painting. Okay, so this same blue I'm going to use in here. So I've got that little bit of that texture that's showing up. You see the difference that happened down here? Now I can see the step. Okay, and I haven't gone far off because this same color is up here. Okay, so the, these there, and maybe I can have these guys up here a little bit lighter if I want to. So I just do a very light drag. I wanted him to catch a lot of light. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put a little bit dark behind it. And that yellow is a little bit garish because what's happening is it's, it's looking like that shadow. So I got a little carried away with myself with that. So I like that value better. Okay, so let's straighten these guys up a bit because they're slanting. And I go over things so many times that, um, you know, that original drawing, you know, I don't really worry about it getting lost because I'm going to be able to straighten things out as I go along. But I'm just going to straighten them out now when I've got it. That kind of makes a little bit more sense too with that little bit of variation. There was, um, um, what do you call it, uh, a railing. <laughs> I think this would not need code. There's no railing <laughs> on this, but I took it out because the, what the railing did is it interrupted the, the flow by the boat. And it just is like, okay, so what? You know, it's just, uh, if you were someplace else, maybe it wouldn't have a, the railing wouldn't be here. Let's just see what's happening. I'm trying to do that light against dark. Okay, and I'll just get around these guys. Okay, and then here it's the light. So this is this is the this is what I love playing with is like these little tiny areas. I don't want to have a lot of them over here, but I want to have a few of them where I've got this like uh, you know dark against light against medium against light against dark. So there's like this little playful thing that's happening there. If something's not working in your painting, check the value like right here. 
I got carried away with making that. Look, at I even used the same color. That was really foolish. So I'm just going to, I like that lightness. So I'm just going to very lightly just, this is with the, the hard bristle. So what this is doing, this is knocking it off. I'm not blending it in. It's not like down here. I wanted to make it darker. That I want to keep it. And I am going to come in a little bit with this right here, straighten that corner off. And he's getting a little bit, the, the, I mean, the sun is strong over here because it's coming through the side. This may wind up getting knocked down. I think I'm just gonna bring a little tiny bit. I know you can probably say, God, that's hardly anything, Betsy. Why are you even putting anything there? <laughs> but just, I can see the edge of that boat there. Because I want the edge of the boats to appear because it's the same thing, the dark against mid, middle and light, dark against middle. Okay, so I'm seeing these edges of things show up because there's a value contrast. Same in here, this little shape here, I wanted to have that value contrast. Okay, so this I'm going to come in with that same dark violet and I'm just going to get a little couple of areas down here. I'm trying to give that tarmac y, a uh, tarmac, um, concrete. This is what this paper is great for concrete and sand because it, there was a drip underneath there, which I knew would get covered up as I go along, but I'm not going to push it in. A little bit of dark down on the bottom because this, you think of it. You know, John Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting. It's like a great book. It's all in black and white. It's from, I think, the 1930s, and it's like a, a Bible of uh, landscape painting. So with your, your sun, now the sun is, we know it's not straight overhead because I've got shadows. The shadows are going this way. So the sun's somewhere over here so that I can have my shadows falling this way. And it's on this side of the boat. So it's somewhere around here. So what's, um, well, could be a little lower, but you get the idea. So anything that, the, as the sun's coming down, anything that it's in its direct path is where I'm trying to make sure that I get that lovely light, which is why these guys. So I'm gonna take that pink that I had down here. I'm just going to put just a couple of little markers for myself. Okay, and see, so I'm changing this now to a pinkish. And that's a, looks like it might be winding up being too light for concrete. But let's go down here. Just put a couple of little markers. Don't want to go too close to the edge because otherwise it's going to happen. I'm going to have uh, that same issue I just did a minute ago. But sometimes you have to stop yourself and say, what are you doing? I like that color. <laughs> Don't put it there. It's not going to work. <laughs> Let's get this here. Not that step down, flatten it out. Always be aware of your perspective. You know, the steps are on a slant, but I don't want them to look like if you walked up them, they would fall over. Okay, I'm starting to fiddle. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna move away from that. I, I was afraid if I started on the steps when I was in here, I'd just get lost in trying to get all this perspective right. So I'm gonna move on. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll just get trapped. Okay. Um, let's see. I like the blue that's over in here. I don't want to have a lot of color here, but I do want to have something. And I started giving it an um, uh, even fainter aqua look. So I am going to get in there with, because um, this boat had color on the inside and this boat did not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that same color that I have over here. I'm gonna put it on very lightly and I'm going to put it where the light is actually hitting. Okay, so the other areas will be in shade. Just mark, so I'm not going to start doing a whole load of detail. These are not, these are fiberglass boats. They have no, none of those nice wooden um, seats in them. Well, this one does right there. A little bit there, a little bit of light fitting in there. So the little carryover of the blue that's there, only on this side, I've kept it come around a little bit later. And I'm also putting it on this kind of muted uh, violet. Yeah, I'm gonna have to really work on the shape of this, this, this boat here. 
put that in. Let's go back to this. Um, let's get a darker blue in that shadow over here. It's a, that, that violet's a little bit strong. So I have this blue that's not quite as strong as that one. I'm going to put it here. And that area is a little darker. I'm just going to bring it down through here. So the violet I can see, but it's not. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just take and do a little bit of drag of this on top of this bluish green that I have. Because you always have to remember is a color is going to look different on one thing. Then now I've got a little bit of a the boat and the shadow. There's a connection there. I'm going to try the same thing over here. Okay, just very, very faint, just a little in the back. This is a, a white bow, but I'm uh, not going to use any white on it because it's, it's in shadow. Okay. Betsy, does the, is the top step of the stairs higher than the platform? No. It's okay. this one. Maybe it's maybe it's the camera angle. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, oh. this is the. I, I couldn't see the top step. Now I see it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's the and yeah, and it's the, the shape of it's a little bit off wonky. I've got to get in there. Okay. I mean, those are all okay. little. Um, oh, look at! I just went in there with another color. <laughs> that's what happens when you get distracted. But anyway, um, yes. So the. Uh, concrete goes around the, the corner there. Okay, so let's get, so the light's coming through here. So I've got the, um, this is picking up on the grass. I'm gonna just get a couple more where I can really see that light that's weak of the, the grasses. Bring them down, don't. Don't draw your grass with the tip like that. Take a, this is a Diane Townsend, um, uh, oh geez, I forgot the name, uh, Tarage. So I'm just gonna get in there and get a little bit more in there. So the, the light's coming through, light's coming through over here. Got a little bit of light back here, but I don't wanna draw a lot of light back here. Okay, I take this green, I put it back there, it's gonna really draw your eye. Less here, a little bit more here. None of it's going to be here. But I did start saying I was going to make a little bit of some little dark areas. So we're going to come in here with that blue violet. And in that jumble, there's a shape of a rock or something there. So I'll just give that a little unevenness. Let me just, perfect. And then I'll come back, this layering back and forth. Let me double check. With this muted blue. Got a little bit of color. That one's got a little bit more color on it. I, okay, I do like the way this is turning out. That drip is showing up there. If I want to take care, I don't mind a little bit of that drip showing up, but I don't. This is just going to take, and I'm just going to push the pastel in so that I don't have that drip mark. For me, I see it. It's obvious, but I know that there's a drip mark there. So just by pushing it in, I could use my finger too, but I don't know, I tend to use tools. Okay, problem is, is sometimes when you, 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 think you wind up doing too much with the brush, I can just get in there and just, just a little bit. So Betsy? Yeah? I'm sorry, I missed the, um, the very beginning, but so you're, what kind of an underpainting do you have under this? I have, um, that's, uh, you know what, I, I'll post them when I uh, send out the recording or the next um, newsletter, but I have, 
underneath anything that was warm, I had um, a variation on orange. Gosh, I can't remember. Orange. And then I had violets. And um, oh, wow. And I think I had, oh, it was a blue green. That was it. It was blue green and orange was my underpainting. Okay, so to varying degrees. So it wasn't like it was solid, but mm -hmm. if it was an area in light, it had some value of the orange. If it was something that was in shade or a shadow, it had um, the blue green. Okay. okay, yes. Very pretty. It's not I like love this it started one. that long ago, but clearly. <laughs> Uh, I've been working on, I, I've got like three or four, you guys know, I've told you that before I work on got a lot going. Uh, a, a variety of paintings. At, um, it stops me from getting uh, too uh, fiddly with one painting because what happens is, is, and I'm really just trying to make marks. I'm not trying to draw. I'm just trying to get a little bit of a, that contrast uh, back there. And I don't want to go too much with that because it's, Going to double check this color. Yeah, this is the color that's back there. So I'm going to just come in. I'm going to use that same one in here, right next to multiple layers, just lots and lots of multiple layers. Okay, now uh, do I want to do any here? Let me just do a little. Okay, just put that in there. Okay, that orange is still looking very orange here. So I tried the, the pink. Okay, so, oh, you know what? Let's, oh, geez, this might be a little, um, this might be a, hopefully it's not a mistake, but okay, that's the orange there. I wonder what's gonna happen if I take, so that's a blue, that's the orange that's underneath. If I squint my eye, they're pretty close in value. I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna see what happens if I put like a little bit of blue on it. Opposite colors, if they're next to one another, they wind up creating a high drama and intensity. Opposite colors on top of one another, wind up creating or neutralizing one another. So I don't want to neutralize the whole thing, but I don't want to have this crazy uh, orange just overtake everything. So just by putting, same value though, if this was darker than the orange, then what would happen is, is the value would be showing up. The, the blue would show up because the blue and the orange are similar values. They're probably somewhere, somewhere right around here to here. So both of them are about that. Yeah, both of them are right around there. Remember that those value, those value scales are, are wonderful. You just have to remember uh, the world is not divided into 10 values. So it's not going to actually be accurate. Okay, so I think that helped. In real life, that helped knock down some of that orange, but has kept that orange flavor, which is really nice. Um, I still feel like those shadows are just like, oh, just like jumping out. I don't know if I'm just battling against something that I have this idea in my head and it's not going to work, or if it's the sort of thing where I have to get more done you know, I just, you know, I, same thing I say in classes, don't make up your mind on something until you've done more, because the reality of it is, is colors, color is affected by everything around it. So until I actually get more done, I'm not going to know whether this is too much. I think part of it is, is I think the value is too dark. I think it needs to be a little bit lighter because it is a shadow on sand. And, um, but I'm really hesitant to try something too dark. Shall I be bold? <laughs> Shall I be bold and try to lighten it? Oh, okay, I gotta find, let me find, um, ooh, let's see, let me break this guy.
the thing is when you get so far, you know, and I've used that phrase before, it's only a sheet of paper. <laughs> but when you get so far into a painting, you're really kind of invested in it. You don't really want to uh, goof it up. Uh, I think I'm just going to leave it. And I'm going to take a little bit of that blue again and just lightly scumble it in there. So it's only a slight shift, but it is slightly lighter. That may, may work. Hmm. Excuse me, Betsy. Yeah. I'm wondering if maybe it's the brightness of the blue that's making it not quite read that it's, that it's sitting down as a shadow. Yeah, and unfortunately I can see it in the monitor and in the monitor what's happening Let's see if it makes a difference. I take the light off of it. No, it doesn't make any difference. The, you know, blue, I find, is one of the more difficult, and I said that in my newsletter, uh, blue is like such a difficult color. It is. It looks much more electric on the screen than it does in real life. But you are right. On the screen, it looks like it's like lying on, you know, it's on top of everything. It's not, um, it's not blending in. So that's, I'm just going to take, I'm going to take some of this same warm blue. It was about shadow. This was, a, this was me all working on shadow. So I'm going to put that there. Let me put a little bit of this in here too. Big strokes. Big strokes there. One side is lighter than the other. A little bit more of the, there. Hmm. Put a little bit in there. It's just, I don't want to have too much color, but I do want to have something. So I'll just put a little bit in there. I think I'm going to, oh, geez. So I think I'm just going to have to let this guy rest and look at him. Um, Etsy, do you yeah. have a photo, a photo of this uh, composition? Yeah. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So all of your those dark shadows, I mean, a photo makes it darker, but they look appear to be the same. Yeah, see, I'm trying not well, to. Here, let value, me... But color, do, do you think you sh even though they're dark, would you change like the like the blue steps? I noticed you started putting a different blue there, a darker blue. Like a different blue, they're all the same blues. Do you think that In could here? be? Yeah, yeah, you know, I have a feeling it is because there's there's violet, there's blue green as a base, both very similar values, and then there is um, blue green. There's a uh, blue violet, and then there's a different value of that blue green in there. I don't want it to be the same as the sand, so I was trying to keep this a little bit darker. Yeah, you know, and it's really similar colors that are up here, except for and which is why I was trying to drag in some of that. Um, let me test it again. That's the same color that's up there. And that's in shade. So I'm just trying to drag that in. And again, I'm trying to um, sing about the weather. I'm not trying to paint it realistically. I like the way this is looking here. You know, no, I love those boats. I'm just yeah, wondering, what if you made the side of this of the took some license there and made the side of the steps darker? Well, the thing of it is, is I, I yeah, I did have them darker. I just really felt as if the darkness on the these steps, this just became. A, well, here, let me show you. Or you know, grayed I, down, or something different. You know the. Let's see. Let's see that way. This is, but this paper can, this paper can take a lot. Okay, so there's, you know, I don't want it to be a big hole there. I have it a little darker down there. Maybe some of that little dark did help, but I, I think I would get in there and change it. I just pulled up a dark violet because that's what I was, that's what I had over here. I, I like that, the darker. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, on that it's piece, just like not going, yeah, it's like not going too dark. That's the, that's the issue there. Then at one point okay. I did have it that dark. <laughs> and it makes yes. sense having it darker down here on the bottom, you know, and less so up at the top. 
And then in here, it's the same thing. I just get a little bit, not much, just a little bit more there. Okay, the other thing that I was trying to, that I, when I was shifting things around is making sure the edges of things were not, is what I meant about, I, I tipped the boats a little bit farther than they, mm -hmm. they were in the photograph. A little bit, it's a little closer to that. Well, this, this guy, whew. okay, this guy's a, <laughs> a definitely a, a challenge. And, you know, it's just, um, you know, I could have put something easier up, but I thought, that you might like to hear how I'm trying to resolve some of those issues and how you can if you're, I mean, I have an idea and I'm use, using this little guy here to help me move my way through this painting. Um, and that idea of starting with something that is smaller just to get down your colors and then working them in at a bigger end. But then of course on the, oh yeah, on the bigger end, it is, uh, it is actually the valleys are looking good. This is looking, I like this back here. That really oh, feels beautiful. like it's pushing, but you know beautiful. what? It's, it's, it's hilarious. Beautiful. I nearly decided everybody can just jump off the edge of the ledge. <laughs> We're not going <laughs> to put steps there <laughs> because it was like, even in the sketch, it was driving me nutty. But I've just got it in my head. I'm going to be able to figure this out. So I will persevere with these steps and get them right. But um, yeah, anyone who saw me when I was working on the little one, I did it for um, one of the classes, uh, you know, who heard me try to resolve that there. So um, yeah, so anyway, I, I was able to, the goal for today was to really keep that connection between something that has more vibrancy and something that is a little bit more uh, neutral. So I was working on that with this and this. This I think could still have a little bit more life to it. I don't think the, uh, the oranges that I have in there are showing up as much on the screen, um, but I still would bring a little bit more life into here by bringing one of these colors that I use. I'm really pleased that I just got in there and tried that um, light blue, same value as the orange, because that actually seemed to have knocked a little bit of that way too much orange feeling. And there's a lovely modeled effect in here. Again, I'll take photos. I'll make sure that they're in. Uh, if they're not in with the, um, recording will be in the next newsletter, you know, one way or another, you know, this sets back. Okay. A little bit of framed with the light here might've put a little bit too much there, but I haven't finished this boat. Neither all these, these boats, none of those, the real light that's hitting them is going to go on until everything is done. And at that point, I'm actually not even planning on using a white. What I have is I have a very light peach, that I'll be using. Yeah, I don't even think you can see it there, but it's not actually a white, it is a, a peach. Um, and I would only use the white if I felt like I really needed like that little glimmer of light that's hitting something. So, so it was fun working on Wallace, not what I expected. <laughs> Not, you know, and I know they have production problems. So hopefully this isn't one of the sheets that uh, it's because she, I guess, ran a whole load of them and the, the, the texture oh. wasn't right. Um, so I don't know. Wow. <laughs> we'll see. It's fun. Um, I love your, I love how your grasses look. And I was just had a question about how you started them. Like, did you work? Um, I know you were working dark to light. So were, were the darks like cool blues and bluish greens yeah it was that same warmer. it was that same dark uh bluish green that's underneath everything um okay you know where it is at the moment oh here it is it's uh you know oh actually no it was darker than that so i really don't know where it is okay. uh, i used it in the beginning it probably went into another box because i i didn't think i'd be using it anymore but yeah it was uh the bluish green but when I painted the, uh, and I do have photographs of the different stages. So when I did uh -huh. paint it though, I did not paint it solid. I paint, um, you've seen me before. This stops you from trying to make everything uh, neat and tidy. You know, whoosh, mm. whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you wind up with a variegated 
or a variation in the values because the fan brush oh. is spreading things out. So when you were doing the underpainting, you did it with the fan brush? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep, oh, I, yep, you yep. know, I never do that. That's a great idea. I'll tell you, it's great. And um, I have been playing with the uh, fan brush, but uh, whatever year it was now, um, I took a Nancy a workshop from Nancy King Mertz when she was on the Cape with the pastel painters. I think it was mm -hmm. 2019. I was with you. Oh, you were? <laughs> yeah. Where we went outside on. Right. On, and she yeah, was like nutty about yeah. her. That, well, I shouldn't say nutty. I mean, she had a reason That's to be. That's right. That, with is painting. that the brush? Yes, with oh. the fan brush. This is probably what, I know I bought one from her. I have a few of them around here. Oh. Truthfully, I use the fan brush pretty much exclusively. Now, I have one, but I don't. You can I drag it. it and you can have yeah. a dark area. And as soon as you drag it with the fan brush, you've made a medium and even a light area. So it's yeah, that's, really that's great. I, I use it like is, brushing is it off, but I've you never using used it. My I'm sorry. We're you using alcohol with the fan brush? Yes. Yeah. I, I okay. nearly always use alcohol. <laughs> On okay. rare occasions, I use water. Um, you know, if I don't have. But it alcohol. wasn't just brushed dry. It was alcohol. So I have another comment. Mm -hmm. Could you check the angle of your steps going back? You know, the oh. light part. Oh, yeah. According the to the your... steps I have. Yeah. I have the perspective oh. and everything. Um, oh, I have okay. to get in there and I get them. I don't do, right, you know, I don't do a lot of that, uh, you know, finish up stuff until I'm closer oh, okay. to being done. And I'll tell you the reason why. If you start, if I start to fiddle on, I actually stop myself, I think. <laughs> if I start to start, you know, getting these, you know, oh, perspective wise, I did start trimming up these guys in here. I'm just going to do it with strokes. I'm not going to draw because the drawings underneath it was my guide. Yeah. But yes, um, that will that will come um, later. Okay. Uh, you know, just you they, know, yeah, yeah. They look it's different just, to me than the photo. Oh, yeah. I'm not worried about, but they are different from the photo. Oh, okay. Yeah, they are different from the photo. I sh I took out a whole row. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, because what I wanted to do is I wanted to I wanted to raise this up a little bit higher, uh, because if you notice, see how close this is to uh, the top of the boat here. I wanted to get the boat up higher, so I either had to move the boat way up into the grass, or I had to drop the um, uh, the stairs. So I, I moved the stairs. So in moving the stairs, I I kind of changed the the photograph. Because you can see, like, we can't, can't see that edge of the photo. Yeah, okay, thank see, you. look at there's the edge there. Okay, and then this guy, see how high, how close he is to all these are all real close together. And I see now this guy here, I've drawn him too high. He's supposed to be down here. Yeah, yeah, he's supposed to be there. He's supposed to be, yeah, and he's so funny. Okay, step down. So see now it, this is higher up. So it's not, I don't have everything in a straight line. It's the same way the edge of this here, this boat here, was almost parallel with the side of this boat here. So I changed it so that this boat is this angle and that boat's that angle. So it's slightly skewed. So this boat's not actually even the same angle because I didn't want the back of this to be parallel to the back of that. It's far more interesting if this guy's on a slight angle to that as opposed to being the exact same angle. Mm. So yeah, I did, uh, which is why I did the sketching <laughs> first, so that I could play around with shifting things, um, you know, within the within the painting. But yeah, it helps to look at the photograph there I too. I love the perspective. It's it's makes it so interesting, and that curve yeah. on the left. Yeah, it, it it was it was it was a lot of fun doing that, and I, uh, you know, this is a this is a gamble. You know, anytime you do something that's just like this as such a void. So, you know, it's that's why I'm trying to get this good interplay between the dark here and the light here, the warm here, the warm there. And, you know, just that variation that's happening up here. Let's hope it works, you know. Betsy, so, I wanted to, uh, I had a comment I wanted to make it, Lisa. Yep, hi Lisa. I want to give a shopper's alert. Dakota has, um, oh. <laughs> Yeah, shoppers alert, ladies. Um, Dakota Art Pastel has um, 
the Blue Earth Pastel sets on sale this month, so they're about ten bucks off. Oh, so, nice. um, yeah, just want to mention that to people. Oh, yeah, great, great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, Thanks, Blue Lisa. Earth are great. If people yeah. have not tried Blue Earth, their uh, their claim to fame is that all their boxes are a set of a value set. I don't. Have, oh yeah, I do have one nearby. Okay, yeah, I can't. So it's probably enough, partially so empty. So this is like all blue. I'm not very good about putting things back. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. The, <laughs> There's um, the a lot cerulean. of blanks in here, but that it would be a box filled with light to dark of just yeah. blue. The cerulean set is marvelous. It's I use it constantly. Cerulean yeah, like is the, an amazing yeah. color in the landscape, and it really has. Yeah, it's it's not just different values; it's also different hues. Um, yes. And then, of course, the clean one, which what I like about them, you you really when you look in the in the in the yeah. um, cerulean, you really do see different colors. It's not just the same color, different values. Yeah, cerulean. Yeah, oh, it just yeah. Yeah. it nice does everything. <laughs> yeah, it does everything from brighten like brighten the landscape to dulling down if you yep. need it. Yeah. They have a great okay. neutral set too. And the one that oh, I use for underpainting all the, the time is that window pink. Mm -hmm. I love the window oh, pink one yeah. because I do like warmth underneath my painting. I do gravitate towards using, if I buy color sheets of paper, like from a pastel mat, I do buy their warmer toned papers. Uh, if I'm doing an underpainting, I nearly always use a warm underpainting. I'm, uh, and you know, having said that, clearly this one had warm and cool because I was doing the sh shade and the that yin and yang, your no tan, dark and light, shade and light. Uh, so I did use the um, the uh, blue green, but even blue green's got a little bit of warmth in it, not as much mm -hmm. as the orange though. <laughs> So well, I'm glad you guys came. This yeah. was this was good. You know, I hope hope you learned a little something love listening to me. Love what I love seeing what you've done with that. I love those two. I love the paths and the two blue boats and that grass. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. I just gotta take care of that. Just gotta take yeah. care of this guy. Oh you yeah, got, yeah. <laughs> I have a couple of ideas. You know. Okay. <laughs> Good. A couple ideas. We'll Lovely. see. Uh, but the beauty of using good paper is, is you can, I, I will, if, I'm hoping there won't be too much of a ghost if I wind up having to take certain things out. But mm -hmm. the reality of it is, uh, um, you know, a good paper, you really can get in there and, and take things off. So it, it you can't get difference. Wallace any longer. Right? No, you can't, which is why, you know, I mean, I knew I had it in the drawer. I just hadn't used it. I have like three sheets of it. And I thought, oh, uh, well, you know, this is silly having it sit there. I should just use it. So I thought, okay, well, this seemed like mm, a good painting. To, it's working. To it's nice. Yeah. yeah, I do like the texture. Beautiful. It is It is different, which is why, I, you know, I figured I better get it out and use it now. There's no sense in hanging on to it. But anyway. I know oh. how you feel. <laughs> I have a stash of papers. <laughs> <laughs> oh. thank, thank you, so Bessie. Thank you so much. It was Thanks, so great Bessie. having you guys yeah. here again. And thank I'll you, send Bessie. out the recording. Good night. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Really enjoyed okay. the evening thank with you. you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Betsy. Bye bye. You. Bye, Betsy. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>